Hmm. I need a drink. You have a drink? Nothing but the finest. Shit. Hold on. I gotta get a beer. Oh, that looks nice. Buddy just put in a new microwave. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Our viewers need to see that. They're concerned about the microwave. Look at that. Did they see that? Look at that. Look at that stain. I don't know. The stainless and the, the old wood doesn't match. Uh, Sorry. I don't know. Sorry. Okay. Fact. Wait a minute. Uh, where's the live video? Is it up anywhere? It's on Facebook. I could have went to YouTube too, but I got guns. No, I don't. I got guns I want to show. Oh, up. there it is. Mm -hmm. I see us. Mm -hmm. Go expand. Click expand. Do you? Oh, by the way, this is the Canada Talk Show episode, whatever. We don't know. We don't care. We're not dead yet. Summer edition 2022. Hey, Drill, what have you done with guns in the last, like, what, four months? Uh, shoot them, I guess. Um, shoot. Oh, wait. Go on. St stack them. Go em. on. Stack them. Oh. Put them oh. Put them up on the wall and stuff. Ah. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. Let's just, let's get some real lights going there. Ooh. See? Oh, yeah, we've got, uh... A spot for a randomly changing rifle up here. Spots <laughs> for handguns. And uh, lots of rifles and shotguns and whatever. And big steel door and secured walls and all that nonsense. Uh, what you need for, uh, for a proper gun room. Plus, uh, I mean, all sorts of like, all sorts of crazy lights, right? It's, but do you have a Boomba? A Boomba? Yeah. It's Roomba? a claymore strapped to a Roomba. Oh, that's upstairs. That's upstairs. Oh, that's the kids know to steer clear of the cats? That's a matter of time. <laughs> what about do you have a dead dog stuffed full of tanner on the entrance of the door? <laughs> I, you know, that's an old trick. It's played out. I've got the flamingos on the lawn, the pink oh. flamingos. Yeah, you get a chain reaction going with those bad boys. Good, Good coverage, good coverage. You just have a single shot 22 bolt action already loaded and ready to go with a string tied to it. So if you think shit's going down, you just reach for the string, yank it, and that sets off the entire lawn. You need special tannerite to make the uh, to make the 22 like you need the 22 rimfire sensitive well, tannerite. That's your starter charge. Duh. 17 HMR, 17 HMR oh. fixes all those problems. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. could I not have known that? Speaking about 17 HMR, I got one of those, but you were talking. What did you do with guns? I got a 17 HMR. It's right there. Oh, nice. I just bought it for the second time. Uh, I had bought it, loved it, uh, shot gophers with it, shot a lot of gophers with 22, sold it to my buddy who really liked how accurate it was. And then uh, he's like, hey, I'm not really using this very much. I'm shooting more 22. You want it back? I'm like, yeah, for what I paid for it. And he honored that oh. deal and... Uh, Four hundred dollars for uh Savage BVTS heavy barrel stainless, Mwah! and it's like sub MOA at a hundred, like ev all day long. It is just disgusting. I hate you for the prices you got it, but I pretty much pay the same for mine, so mm. it can't be that mm. bad. Mm. You're so good, so good. Um, yep. I was I was actually just out the at the range today. Um, I was uh out with uh this guy here. This is a a Narinko CF ninety eight. It's a Chinese pistol, as you can see from the uh, the red star. Well, it's not so red. Maybe I should paint it red. Yeah, make it yeah. look Yeah. Um, it's a DASA handgun, so single action, decocked, off you go. Oh, it's got a decocker. Yeah, yeah, decocker on it or double action out. Uh, it's a rotating barrel setup, which is uh, pretty interesting. Not something you see on a lot of handguns. Uh, the barrel life is supposed to be terrible it's supposed to be like eight thousand rounds max um what? i don't know how i don't know how true that is though it might be like a translating like, error or something like that is is that like is that because is, is that made out of like the finest chinese pod metal in the barrel well um it, the barrels actually made like this gun's in the the chinese proper military one because this, this is a military a pistol the proper one has a a 5.8 millimeter 5.56 uh, right. bullet so not, yeah. the barrel's thicker 
Or and when you go to nine mil, it's quite thin, as you can as you can see there. So maybe that's thinner than to do any with others, it. though. I mean, it's not that much thinner, really. Not much. It's got a like, like, look, really. Look, this is a shadow freaking. Like, yeah, that looks fine. That yeah, same thing. It's got a really quick takedown. Uh, so you saw I just poked the uh, the pin there, the slide stop pin, and just pull it out, and then uh, off comes. Wait, you don't you don't have to like pull the slide slightly back out of the C set or anything? No, no. Out she comes. There's your stuff and things, and you can just pull that guy off there, and uh, this guy comes out like a 1911. Sorry, the barrel bushing oh. should have that a little bit higher. And then you just kind of see it. Look at all those lugs. Look at all those lugs. <laughs> Multi lugs, lugs everywhere. I wonder and, if they uh, just didn't change anything on that other than the bore diameter and the chamber from that fancy 5.7 thing. Maybe. I mean, there's not really anything super interesting about it other than the fact it's 250 bucks, which, uh, okay, now <laughs> you have my attention. Um, and uh, it's got a very small grip. Like, the, uh, the grip on it is absolutely tiny. And uh, even well, though it's PLA soldier size, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my my kid shot it today. He loved it. He he really liked it. So yeah, well, it, he's roughly PLA soldier sized. <laughs> he was actually grown quite a bit. So now he's uh, he's he's probably too big to uh, to fit a lot of the the standard PLA stuff. Uh, but uh, oh yeah, that's the other thing that's interesting about this. Um, it doesn't like it does have the slide rails at the back here, but it has nothing in the middle. Instead, everything rides on this metal insert on on the middle. So like this whole thing, it just kind of pops out, and that's the, these rails here uh, are actually what the gun rides on. And there's like the the carrier here that's got rails on it. So really, you're putting this uh, sorry this inside the rails here, and wiggling it around and that is what holds the gun together which How is uh, quaint. odd very can odd you, it can you idiot scratch it like a 1911 you you can do that yeah that's uh i haven't yet but uh be because of how thin the uh uh finish is on this i'm, I'm gonna it's, it's, <laughs> it's gonna happen mm, let's see oh right there no right there i'm just gonna have to just fucking crack it there we go. <laughs> Give it a couple of hits with a screwdriver, but uh, the single action on it is is really light. It's actually quite nice. Uh, I trigger froze on it a couple of times. I don't know what you know what trigger freeze is. That's where you let back and then you, you pull the trigger again and it doesn't go off because you didn't think you thought it was enough. So I, like I pull it back and it wouldn't be enough. Uh, so the, um. the, the reset on it's quite long. You really have to let it out really far <laughs> to, uh, to use it again. Is that all the way from, like, is that almost all the way to the double action reset almost? Mm, no, I don't think so. Cause the double's like starting right here and the single action is right there. Okay, so there's still, yeah. uh, not a, like, there's just still quite a bit of there, but uh, interesting pistol. If you want a cheap handgun for uh, for a youth or your wife or something like that. Um, I let my kid shoot the uh, the shadow, and he's like, oh, "I like this other one. It's lighter." I'm like, "Okay, good." <laughs> I did not want to. I don't want to outfit him with all this other like fancy gear. Yeah, if you like the cheap garbage. I'll I'll buy you. You know, you can use the cheap garbage. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, constructing this uh, this gun room has been interesting. Um, I don't know. I went basic for like storage because I need to store a lot. Uh, you see a lot yeah. of guys doing like the gun wall. And you can do the gun wall for pistols. You can see there, like, it's it's fairly easy to, like, put those up on the wall. But, like, rifles and shotguns are way too big. You don't, I'd only yeah. be able to fit, like, five, six, maybe, yeah. on that entire, yeah. like, section up there. It just wouldn't work. Whereas if I just, if you vertically rack them, you can put, like, just garbage loads. So that's what I'm doing. I'm not going to... Yeah. I'm not going to display, my, my, like, a bunch my of... My rotating display on the walls on the gun racks is, like... I really have to play like Tetris to make sure everything lines up correctly. And there's some guns that straight up don't work on the gun rack that I have, and some guns that only work with other guns not in one position or in one position in particular. So Yeah. Whereas this is easy. I'm just I'm just gonna go with like one feature gun, all the handguns, like uh, that's literally just a chunk of two by two up there for now. I'll do whatever <laughs> I wanna care. Uh right now what I'm working on is lighting, so that's where 
Uh, I've got like a couple of face uh, ones here. I've got the uh, the perimeter lighting I'm working on, and then I've got like red and blue that I've got in the back. I also have a red strip above my door so that my kids know not to like knock on the door and like open it as I'm like in the middle of a video like I am right now. So that's uh, uh -huh. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's the, a lot of thought into this. Or? The, I'm I'm doing stuff right now, light. But, You're doing uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So. That's uh, basically what I've been up to. Um, I've been reviewing some other guns and whatnot. Um, you reviewed some of my guns. <laughs> I reviewed some of your guns, yeah. The the Jard and my, my editor is still not doing the Savage 24 video, which I like keep bugging him to do, but uh, he's slow. He's slow. Is he it's talking to girls? Is that it? Ah, uh, like exercise, exercise. Oh. All the exercise. At least the girls, though. For the girls, I think. That's that's why you do that, right? Yeah. That's that's at that age. That's mainly why you do that. So I had this out the range today. This is a. Uh... Did you? What's that? Did you polish the chamber like you said you were gonna? Uh no. I polished. Well, I changed the barrel, so I went to the eighteen. The twenty-eight was very sticky. I went to the eighteen. And I polished the carrier and, and the cam pin where the cam pin hits the carrier and whatnot. It didn't help at all. It, it did nothing, actually. I noticed no difference. It's still sticky as heck. I still had to, like, do the old uh, mortaring to, uh, to get the shells Ooh. to extract on this thing. I tried different ammo. Uh, it's still doing the same thing. I just think the the, like the internals just aren't very good. This is a Savage Stevens 320 uh, 12 gauge, by the way, just for anyone who's listening or watching or whatever. Um, the reason you have it is because Cabela's had it on sale for like 230 bucks, right? Two, two ninety nine with the 18 inch barrel and the 28 inch barrel, both. Which is just ridiculous. fantastic. That's that's very similar to the Mossberg Maverick 88 uh, pricing. Um, yep. but I think the Mossberg Maverick is, uh, better than this one. I ran into someone at the range today and they're like, oh, I've got one. I've had one of those for six years and, uh, it, it runs great. Now I think this is one that's imported from China. And I think like, this is very recent. Like I believe they released these in 2020 or 2021. So, um, did Savage make a Stevens 320 shotgun before? Did they make a version of this before? I know, I know that I've seen that gun before because I recognize the shape of the ejection port and that hump at the back of the receiver. Well, but the, I am not sure. it's a it's a Winchester thirteen hundred clone. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but like a but, uh, Nor Nork made one, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I can't. I can't confirm nor deny that accusation. Can't say I'd recommend it over the uh, Maverick. I don't think you should. Uh, oh. More issues. More. <sighs> Almost fall into my chair here. Uh, this uh -oh. A22. Uh, last time I had it out, it was more or less reliable. Um, I went to take it, and the bases were loose. Okay, of course. Factory, factory scope. Yeah, the bases are going to shoot loose on it, because you can't depend on them to figure that stuff out. Um, mm -hmm. I had, the gun was fine. The mags gave me so much problems. The 25 rounder and the 10 rounder both gave me fits. The 10 rounder, uh, wasn't, it's a, it's a rotary mag and it wasn't rotating. So it wouldn't feed up like another round into the chamber. The 25 rounder, same issue. And if you get a kid to load it, uh, they can run into all kinds of issues. And I got it so badly jammed up that I just, I had to take it back. I just, I couldn't, uh. It's, really? it's sitting in my bin here because it's so jumbled up with the ammo that's stuck inside of it that uh, I'm going to have to like, I don't know, I'll put it upside down and like shake it for a few minutes to, uh, to unfuck it. But uh, there's a, there's a three gun match coming up and uh, uh, I was going to get my kid to uh, join me in doing it. And I was going to get him on this because it has a 25 round mag and in my mind it was reliable, but um, dear God, oh. it was not, it was not. So instead... I said he's gonna go with this. <laughs> this little guy. I mean, that's that's a slight upgrade. A slight upgrade. I so um, 
the mags on this um, aren't as, uh, in my opinion, the mags aren't as good, but geez, like uh, experience has shown me otherwise, maybe they'll be fine. Um, with this one, yeah, you, you can pull this one out or you can dump it entirely and put a, a 10 rounder in there, right? This is a, yeah. a 1022. It's got the uh, SBI, um, uh, what do you call that adapter that they've got? Oh, yeah, 1022 597 magazine adapter. Go inside. Go inside. Maybe you need the magazine out. Yes, you need the magazine out first. And then you'll go in. Yes, there we go. Yeah. Uh, I only have one of these mags, but I got a buttload of the 10 rounders. So I guess he'll use this. It's nice and short. It's handy. So uh, yeah, I think that's what he's going to use. And then he mm -hmm. ran his 20 gauge shotgun today and it was reliable enough. So he'll he'll keep going with that. It's a Partis. Oh, <laughs> Partis 20. Yeah, it's one of those ones I got for, for like super cheap back. Uh, I remember those. I had one of those like that. Oh, yeah. More like seven, but yeah. Yeah. And then for handgun, boy, he really liked that nine mil, the CF 98, but I don't have enough mags for it. So he's going to run the uh, Norinco. No, sorry. The GSG uh, 1911 22. We're shooting that today okay. and it was super reliable. Have you upgraded all the guts in it? Like bought the refinement kits and whatnot? Uh, some of them. Uh, let's see. Not the guts, actually. Um, well, no, some of the guts. Um, I believe the hammer is aftermarket. Uh, the sights are. The sights are a big upgrade to go with, like, a Dawson instead of what, uh, what it comes with. But I haven't done the whole, like, uh, guide rod and bushing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, if, it's, if it runs reliably, I mean, that's an excellent start uh, crystal. Ah, well, reliably... Like it is very very <laughs> picky on ammo, and you need to keep it clean. Like there, there there's some more reliable 22 pistols out here compared than this one, the Ruger Mark IV and that kind of a thing. They're more reliable, but find competition gear for a Ruger Mark IV. You can't go find me a, a nice locking uh, holster for it, like the, so you can run around with it yeah. and go fast. Okay. How about mag yeah. pouches? Eh, eh, not really. This thing uses a 1911 holster and 1911 mag pouches super easy to find both of those so yeah there's uh there's certainly some advantages to going with something that like mimics that size and and that uh that weight and 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 shape perfectly um yeah yeah i took my shadow two out ran great i took my uh wsmcr out um it needed some sighting work and uh i'm glad i did take it out because it was quite a, quite far off um I think I, I don't know, I must have retorked the barrel or maybe I used the red dot on something else or, you know, whatever. It's been a while since I've I'm familiar it. with that. I had to do musical chairs with optics this week because I got a new gun and I'll get to it. But yeah, I, had, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. So I'm glad I took that out. I didn't bother taking my shotgun out because it is like a known good gun. I don't need to do anything to it. Oil it and uh, away she goes. That's what I was going to say. Make sure it's oiled. <laughs> it's an inertial action i don't like i oil i clean and oil it because i feel like i have to but it's never really given me any trouble so i don't even know if I mean, I need you could to. you could go with the uh tried and true run until it does something you don't like and then clean it yeah but i like to win so <laughs> that's you like to much. go fast and for yeah. it to go fast it needs to be lubed <laughs> well and 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 Nothing is more frustrating than uh, than shooting a match and having the gun fail you. Like I, I don't care if if I fail me, I could beat myself up. If the gun fails me, oh, that's that it it hurts. It's annoying and uh, I don't like it. Yeah. Anyways, don't that's uh, I guess that's what I, what I've been up to. I'm gonna do a maple seed uh, this weekend in Drumheller and Tabor, and uh, yeah. uh, the weekend after that I've got three gun, and the weekend after that I've got God, all of every, every weekend in June. And maybe yeah, July. Yeah, that's what it's looking like me. And that's what yeah, it's looking like for weekend. me as well. Every weekend there's going to be something. Like, I've got them all on the calendar, and um, uh, hopefully I make it through the, the summer with no divorce. <laughs> Based hey. on how many times I'm going to be at the range. <laughs> hey, yeah, no, it's, uh, I'm familiar with that. I had to, I have, a, I have, I have to schedule my classes. I have a wedding and two gun, three gun matches to schedule all my classes around. So it's like, yeah. 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 Uh, what have you been up to? Uh, I've been stimulating the shit out of the economy. Is what I've been up to. So my buddy about two weeks ago, um, right after the 
not a gun registration registration stuff stuff came into effect uh, was announced so that was what tuesday two weeks ago it's like i'm ordering some stuff from sbi what do you want and i said to him i don't know throw in a lynx 180 lower in your order why not <laughs> so i got a lynx 180 or lower which turned out to be uh, prescient and very fortunate that i did for reasons that i'll explain later i just ordered so one I have too. That, yeah i just have one of those so i have the 180 links lower just sitting around then cgn came clutch and uh this uh, popped up on cgn uh so for the viewer <laughs> what you're looking at is a uh, pure memeage this is a hunt group fd12 bulb up left hand model 12 gauge shotgun and it's a meme that's this is a hundred percent a meme there is very little that i can say that anything else would do better than this uh, uh three gun I, that's what i'm gonna do i'm yeah. gonna three gun it yeah because it, it's got detachable box magazines and even the fibers would be good but there is a sneaky little shotgun out there called the AS46. It's a pump action 12 gauge shotgun with detachable box magazines and it just so happens to fit this gun. Not so made for I'm it. I'm not made for it. Just so happens to fit. Happy coincidence. Happy coincidences. So yeah, the um the 10 round Stigmax fit this thing and it is hilarious. So I bought it with according to the ad a few rounds of buckshot through it mint okay and when i opened it up and i cleaned it which by the way is a process unto itself when you run this thing the disassembly video is going to leave you going what the fuck um there's a video out you... there i think um someone's got a video on the fd12 where there's disassembly involved hmm. it's a fuckery i'll give you the short version you see that that's a barrel nut mm-hmm and you take another, this down with a special another, wrench. Is there another one underneath? Oh, there is four. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you take this down, and then this entire upper comes off after you pull the charging handle off. Then comes the first, or no, the second barrel nut, which is a locking nut that sits in front of the nut that mm -hmm. is over the gas system. So you take off the locking nut, then you take off the nut to take out the gas system. And then the barrel has another nut securing it to the receiver right here and they can all come loose and fuck up the functioning of the gun so that's nuts yeah uh, <laughs> uh, 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 i live for uses, dad jokes uh, invector ch uh, chokes which if you don't know are these hilarious little chodes they're like yay long just tiny little chokes in there uh, it came with a Macpool grip and a Macpool forend, uh, which I promptly hmm. put back the original uh, 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 um, hunt group grip because it's nice and rubberized and I kind of like it. Uh, I added a little bit of pick rail covers here so that I don't grate my hands shooting it. And then came the musical chair number, trying to find an optic to fit this fucking thing. This rail is slightly undersized in the width dimension. Uh, hmm. I hate when they so, do that. If you have this type of optic mounting system, which just clamps on, no problem. You just keep breathing on it until it closes on there. But the height over bore causes an issue with this, because this isn't exactly like an AR-15. So... Trying to mount an optic on this, I had to find a riser because if I just put a red dot straight on there, it was too low. So the only riser that I had was this, uh, it was like a Bushnell one that had two halves, but they would be pivoting in and then they kept, I had to keep cranking and keep cranking until they were like at a weird angle and I was like, mm -mm, this isn't going to work. So I had to rip this off of the j180 <laughs> so now there is an aimpoint pro on this piece of shit turkish gun <laughs> uh 
Well, it'll I survive. Haven't... You know, you know, the optic will survive the recoil. Like, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I that's kind of why I was thinking is like I need something you know sturdy because if I put like my TRS twenty five has been on a shotgun before, but I don't know if I would put it on there long term. Um, I sear it with slugs, and I began the process of breaking it in by running two hundred rounds of high brass shells through it. Um, initially, it was not cycling target load. I am about two thirds of the way to those two hundred rounds, and now it is ejecting sometimes the shell and loading the next one. But more often than not, you get a stovepipe, so the shell is just hanging out. Mm -hmm. But it's not a double feed or it's not a bad jam. You can just grab the shell and rip it out, and then the next shell will load in fine. The uh, the ten round pump mags feed well enough that I don't I don't care if there is an occasional double feed, which is about the only thing that it, they will do sometimes. Um, but as soon as this thing is going through those five round and 10 round max reliably of target load, yeah, this thing is going to be out there all the time because it is just so stupid. Like the thing is so dumb. It's 26 inches and in, I mean, 28.5 inches in overall length. Like, this is tiny. Like this has got a 20 inch barrel, which chokes. This is nice. And, uh when you properly oil it, it's not horrible in terms of feeling of the action. But heard the directions of SBI's uh, owner, you got to run this bad boy dripping wet. So yeah, like, it's, you, have to... it, you need to wear, wear it in for, uh, without any oil. Just let it like grind on itself for a bit and then clean it, oil it, and, uh, and then it'll run. But the, it's, it's marginal on cycling target loads. Yeah, what do you what are you running target. for target? Are you running like uh, ounce and an eighth kind of stuff or? One uh, no, no, it was it was just basic one ounce uh, target load, not handicapped. Uh, it was and it was cycling it just with the occasional stoke pipe at the end. Of, uh, I mean, like I said, I'm not through the 200 rounds of high brass. Yeah, and by the way, putting like 10 rounds of buckshot down range quickly. <laughs> Nasty. Um, you might want to get some handicap stuff because like at three gun, um, some, some targets that you're shooting at, uh, you don't need the extra power and the less recoil is better for most targets, more, uh, spray down range is actually better. Um, if you think about like those little square knockdowns or something like that, you can be, you can go with a, a wider choke and be lazier on your aiming. Uh, with more, 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 uh, more, more shot. Yep. And then the other thing that happens is, um, spinners are knocked at targets that you need like lots of energy on ounce and an eighth versus one ounce big difference big difference on mm -hmm. those so i per, i just run ounce and an eighth all the time even though my shotgun will cycle less so you might want to try that because if it if it runs ounce and an eighth you're good to go that's pretty gucci okay i'll, I'll look for those you can get cheap stuff Win winchester super target super just a second super x mm -hmm. Well, some features of this while I, while he's looking for that is it does have a reversible magazine, I mean, a charging handle, so you can run it on either side. Uh, not that you would, because this is very much whatever side, yeah, the tar super target. Heavy. Um, heavy. Heavy target yeah. load. So, yeah, whatever side this gun is designed to be used, you got to stick to that side. I did try to shoot this uh, offhand, uh, I mean, uh, off, uh, what do you call that? When it's the opposite Left shoulder. Left-handed? Oh no, that that is left-handed. Oh. Um, yeah. Is it off shoulder? Weak, no. weak, weak shoulder. Weak side. side. Weak side. Yep. Yeah, weak side. I did try to shoot the weak side, and I didn't eat the brass. But if you look at it, like it's close. It's yeah, really, there's... really close. Like I felt like I felt something kind of like whisk my whiskers uh, when I was shooting it. Um, weak side. You're probably um, getting like does... unburnt powder and powder like directly in your mouth if you do it that way. Yeah. <laughs> So it does have an ambidextrous magazine release, but I don't know how you would use the one on the other side uh, unless you're like gripping the whole mag and ripping it down. You might as well just do it from this side. You get the exact mm -hmm. same leverage. It's weird. Uh, it does have a bolt uh, hold open and a bolt lock here. It's just your standard AR mag. But again, how, why would, how, you, how would you use that? You insert the mag and then flip over and slap it, but the ejection port shield kind of gets in the way of that i'll just run the slide also because the 10 rounders 
don't lock open on those. They can't lock open. The follower is different because it's more yeah. pump action shotgun, remember? Um, so Who yeah, cares? Pretend it's an AK. AKs don't lock yeah. hope on, open on the last shot anyways. Yeah, so that, that'll, be, that'll be what I'm doing with this. Um, then I, also, I was also at the range Saturday kind of testing out some things and getting some pointers from my friend from my friend who actually has done some competition shooting mm-hmm. and I thought I was going to run the Glock just cuz simplicity no no uh, no. <laughs> no, <I'm not>. yeah. <laughs> no I'm not yeah 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 uh, so so I shot the shadow after shooting the Glock and I was like yeah I don't even have to try and I'm like stacking them on this you know Better recoil control, yeah, better tracking. Yeah. It's like all that extra weight out front makes a big difference. Yeah, my friend who has been on the cusp about it, like after I let him shoot it twice, he's just looking at it with a look that just says, you're going to cost me money, aren't you? And yeah. <laughs> he's like, should I upgrade my Glock? And I was like, mm, I mean, you could. A buddy of mine was at the was at the range and I shot his CZ uh what's tax sport um it's and you, and you think like shadow tax sport like ah what's the difference really there is a little bit of a difference there I was I mean, shooting the, the... this uh four inch uh circle uh uh flapper target at uh, 25 and I just like I threw four rounds in the mag and I hit three times out of the four just like a tiny little flapper at 25 meters with a handgun yeah so steady i i prefer the um like the shadow two's got this uh angled and then flat uh rear sight and the ts yeah. has a uh just a flat rear which i prefer um and uh the trigger on it's pretty nice too yeah yeah i had a friend of mine out there as well who had a sick 226 oh it's like a super fancy single action competition model Oh, uh, Legion. Legion. At the Legion. Legion, yeah. yeah. I was like, oof, like the Close trigger on that? Gun. Yeah. It's like a single action trigger on this, but it was a yeah. single action only gun. And it is so fucking chunky. It's just it's just a big gun. Like the Shadow is not a small gun, but somehow it just felt like that 226 was even bigger somehow. It just height feels over bore, like, it, like, like it's got a ton of height over bore on them and. I mean, I think just dimensionally, dimensionally is larger. Like the slide is a great big thing on top. Yeah. It's it's yeah. wider, a big gun. Um, then came the decision that maybe somebody gives a shit about, maybe somebody doesn't. Um, J one eighty. I was planning, as Adriel mentioned on his review, to try and fix the magazine issue by three D printing a lower. And while I was at it, I was going to try and make it fit the Bison mags. I would have to relieve the upper as well as the mm. lower. Mm. I'm not about to go fuck around inside of the low upper. Nah. I mean, a lower, a lower, I might, I might have considered putting all the work into making a proper mag well and an actual Air 15 uh, mag release channel in there. But now, I think if I can, if Sylvester comes through and they like warranty it somehow. I'm going to pull all the guts off of that gun and I'm going to put all this stuff onto the J18, onto the uh, Lynx 180. Specter, yeah. Once once Tristan finishes these uppers, he said that he was going to have an upper for me. Uh, and I'm just going to fucking transplant everything to that gun. Do you have the, the Lynx 180 lower already? Yeah. Yeah, nice. I'm just going to copy paste everything out of there and put it on that yeah. gun. Yeah. Unfortunately, I, did ha- I do have one announcement. Uh, A2 stocks do not fit the Lynx 180. <laughs> There's so not sad. many people who want to know the answer to that, but I'm glad that you will always, always answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> Does it fit A2 stocks? I can be the A2 stock guy. So what I'm going to be running for 3-Gun is the RDB. The RDB. Uh, well, like I, I think I mentioned there, that, that guy out of BTSA ran one and destroyed everyone. Not because of the gun, because he's an amazing shooter, but the gun didn't slow him down at all. It's heavy. Like, I clocked it in. It weighs exactly the same as this guy, eight and a half pounds. With optic? With optic. Well, that is fine. With optic? Eight and a half pounds? Uh, do you want to know what my 180 weighs right now? Please do. I'm sure it's more. Really? Yep. 
With optic? Oh. I'm sure it's more. The last time I had this out in the show, the butt pad came in. So this is a Haga Defense H A G E G A um, RDB enhanced butt pad. Uh, it comes with a really fucking, fucking huge fat recoil pad. Like like it's got the big extended recoil pad. It may, it makes the length of pole stupid. Length of pole comes out to be like 15 and a half inches with it, which is just enormous. Like you need like a like a big wingspan to be able to comfortably hold that. What does yours weigh? Nine pounds. <laughs> I got the ACSL stock on there, a little maybe a paracord. I don't know. Oh, it's got a thick barrel on it too. Thick barrel and the big brake and the big and the and the, the and the and the <laughs> pro the the Aimpoint Pro, the the world's largest optic. <laughs> I've got the uh, I think the same as you. I've got the um, Vortex the upgrade. Yeah, yeah, the Vortex, Vortex thirty mil high or whatever. Uh, actually, I think I have a uh, mediums on that. I don't like my, my face is thinner than yours, I think. You have a big, big, big white person face. I like the <laughs> standard AR height on my optics. I like to get right down on this. Uh, also, I'm thinking about, I really like this because right now as it is set up, uh, the magnifier is on there. You're running if open. Need... You might as well, you might as well run all the good stuff. A magnifier yep. red dot combo is very versatile. Yeah. Um, I went from the standard length uh, Lucky Irishman um, RDB handguard to the Canadian length handguard, which gives me just a little bit extra length uh, to go basically up to the muscle. Before the handguard would stop to here, so I just got a little bit more. That lets me kind of more comfortably grip it all the way to the front. Not quite a Costa grip, but almost. Um, I had an A2 flash hider on it because I got sick of the gigantic MDT Elite muscle break that I had on it. But uh, now I have it the last linear comp on there. Which actually, according to my friend, really helped mitigate some of that concussion. Um, what? 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 I haven't se I haven't seen any good studies that have sh that have corroborated that. Hey, he was standing next to me, and if I had a break, he would have been concussed. Oh yes, a, a, a versus a break, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely versus a break. Um, but the thing to consider is like, is it cutting down recoil? Um, or, um they're direct in the blast or doing like some combination of uh, of those two i mean the the, the, the problem the, the problem with that argument is bolt up all the weight is back here so like there is just no recoil with this thing to begin with now with all the weight of the extra handguard there's even less recoil also yeah. this has a tunable gas system and after i found out from my friend that it's not just me but a lot of cross mags don't like to lock on the last shot open Mm -hmm. I'm just going to tune this way the F down and run it super soft shooting, just barely pooping out the brass. What, uh, what mags are you going to run with it? Cross I'm going to run the cross mags. Why does gonna... it want to lock open? Like, I, I guess you'd be suggesting like the, the spring is, is weak and it's not... Uh, you'd, get, you'd be getting misfeeds, though. And no, it's just, it's just... No, no, no. I, I was talking to him and he said that on his MCR, the cross mags weren't locking open. Hmm. They run great in mine. Yeah. Do they lock open always? Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe I just have some lemons or something. Oh, um, two of these things. Nice. All right. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and I also, and just for a little bit of tactic coolness, I added these two pieces of, uh, oh, I lost the cover. Oh, well, I have to look for that. Um, these two pieces of uh, M-Lock cover so that my finger doesn't have the propensity of going over and touching, uh, the, barrel. touching the barrel. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, so just a little bit of extra protection there for me to run this. And it's fully ambidextrous, and my friend was help, was running this who has the competition. He's like, I think you're going to do just fine. Like, I don't think there should be an issue with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. How are you going to reload your shotgun? Uh, do you, like, what did you do? Did you put a loop on the mags? Loop on the mags. You got to talk to Chad, and and you have to get a little strip of Kydex. So if you got a Tandy leather or something like that near you, or you just have Kydex, uh, what you got to do is um, I don't have a mag next teach me, to me. Teach me, um, Ah, here, your magazine needs a clip on it, um, and that clip is going to actually go onto your belt. 
so that your magazine can be held. You're not gonna find a pouch for it. You're gonna put a little Kydex clip right in the middle of it, and that's going to go on your belt. And when you need a new mag, <laughs> you're just gonna pull it right off. You're gonna need to, you'll talk to uh, Chad and ask for, to see, or just check out his Instagram and, uh, and find the photos of it. And that's how you're gonna ma modify your mags. And then okay. the build, yeah, I was, oh, was going to think if I was just going to, well, I know I might have a way to solve this. I could just put some Velcro on it and uh, tape it to myself. That's another <laughs> option. That's an option. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are you running plate? Like, are, are you running anything else on your plates? <sighs> As a, I mean, I haven't decided if I will, but... Uh, it doesn't matter which side they go on. I bought some armor. Indeed. And as you can see, a crow. Do you have uh, mag pouches or anything like that for them? Right here? No, you need some right in the middle. You need some up front. That's where you need your mags. I, I don't was, know. There was a standard here place reaching for... here. Reaching me over here. See all the, 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 uh, the elastic here? Or Mac pouches. Huh. Just slip the Macs right in there. Soup, soup, soup. And oh. some up front, too. I could. Do you get a belt? Are you going to run a like a gamer belt on with that as well? Yeah, I think so. Run your whole your pistol. I, no, I do actually. No, I mean, not, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not memeing here. I do actually have a couple of air arm Mac pouches. I have two. I mean, that should be enough. Plus, like 60, like 60 rounds on, on me. That'll be enough. With the cross mags doubled up. Yeah. Yeah. So this has got... Uh, what the hell plates? Oh, what the fuck are they? Steel? Uh, ceramic? Aluminum? Opposite. U-H-W-M-P-E-W-H plastic? No, it's H-1000. It's H oh, God, what the hell? H-1000? Well, you lost... You, <laughs> you hit the wrong oh. button. <laughs> That wasn't the correct button. That was the hang up button. I yeah, don't know. We were that, playing the hang up game. That was the uh, the reload, not the open new tab button. <laughs> so where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Uh, is it the oh, ultra heavy molecular weight? It's a Hesco plate. Um, da, 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 da. Where are you? Yeah. A Hesco three ten level three plus multi curve plate. That doesn't mean anything, though. Uh, I will tell you that this will stop 7.62 by 39 with a mild steel penetrator, okay? And it will stop 30-06 jacketed soft point, and obviously your FMJ 5.56 and everything else below that. It will not stop armor-piercing rounds of any kind, but it will stop 7.62 by 39 with a mild penetrator, which is not armor-piercing, but it's like light it's got a steel core, but it's not a penetrator. It's no. just like a, it's yeah. cheaper than lead kind of a thing. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So this is this is perfect because as I, as the guy was saying, yeah, yeah, this will stop thirty out six jacket at soft point. I was like, oh, I guess what is I'm it the four hundred series? What what series no, it, is that? I'm trying to figure out like what what this thing's made of. Um, it's it's a it's a fancy newfangled uh, thing. Uh, we were looking at it. It's Spectra material and technology. It's like a Spectra plastic or something. It's it's a composite material. It's not a steel plate. It's not a ceramic plate. It is quite literally plastic with some fancy. That's probably technology. UH Ultra High Advanced Sappy Cut. Why aren't these? What's the weight on them? 4.3 pounds. That's not that heavy. They must be oh. plastic then. They plastic. The plastic's good. Like the, the ultra high molecular weight stuff, it, it takes multiple hits. Uh, they're light. They're bulky. So like a, a plastic These is, are is really very thick. thick. Plates. Okay, that's yeah. probably what it is then. Those are really good. Did you get a good deal on them? Fuck oh, no. I paid full price for it. Oh, they're... they're the, 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 because those plates are... Like the most favored right now, those are quite expensive. Ceramic is still really expensive, but those are better than ceramic. Ceramic is like used to be the best. Yeah. 
Oh, I'm really happy with this. This was like the the highest level plate that they still had in stock. They didn't have any uh, level four level plates, four. and yeah. I don't want to run steel because I like my back to not be hurting by the time that I'm 45. <sighs> yeah, so. they're they're so heavy. Yeah, no, I think uh, I think I was I was talking to the guy, and their level four plates are like five pounds each. So when you put them in a carrier, you're carrying ten pounds around. And that's the light stuff. Like a, st a steel yeah. set would be uh, would be very heavy. So, so I got my plate carrier. Um, uh, I finished. Uh, <laughs> now uh, wear that all day in the heat, and you'll be like sweating your bag off. Last last year at the, the Battle of Alberta, which is a three gun match here in, in Alberta, some of the guys that we have a trooper division where trooper division is you have to carry all your ammo, uh, guns and whatever with you um, and and <laughs> plates. And uh, and it was hot. It was like 32, 34 and guys <laughs> with plates, they don't breathe. So you got a big chunk on your chest and your back that, that, that can't breathe and you, just, you sweat so bad. It's just soaking by, by the end of the day. Love it. Um, I finished putting together the replacement for my CZ 452 and my CZ 4, I mean 512. I now have C71 fully decked out. Um, I replaced the charging handle from the one when you had it, which uh, Tristan was saying might have been potentially causing those uh, feeding issues. Yeah. Because they would can balance the shell back into the uh, action. Yep. So this has now, I think it's I think it's a Volkhorsen extended charging handle and guide rod. It still has the uh, experimental prototype uh, Case Harton SBI bulb. Mm -hmm. um, no release date on this, so don't email Tristan about it. Or our he's viewers. busy. Yeah, he's busy. Um, he said that he sold three months worth of guns in the last two weeks. I wonder what that's going to do with my pre-order. <laughs> what did you pre-order? <laughs> uh, Lynx 180. Well, I got mine and I ordered it two weeks ago, so. Mm, I ordered mine yesterday. Day of? Yesterday. Ooh. Ooh. I don't care about the, reg the registry. That's not a registry. That the government will know that I have guns um, fairly easily. I think so. <laughs> I mean, maybe. By the way, there may be some clues guns. out there that I got. Yeah. None, none of these are mine. They're they're my buddies' uh, faves. Not that's Dave's. what I tell faves. the wife. That I, don't, I think the government yeah. might know better. <laughs> so yeah, I got this guy all finished up. Uh, I bought a Savage ninety three R seventeen, uh, heavy barrel, but with a wood stock. Um, and just like you, uh, that gun just shoots circles around. So good. Twenty two guns. Um, it's sub MOA at hundred meters. Uh, it's hard to do that with a 22 long rifle gun. Oh yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been debating getting a nice stock for it. Oh, oh it feels so good. It yeah. feels so good. I, I, mine is starting to get worn in, and I was running the bolt uh, as I was fondling the CZ bolt, and I was like, you know, this isn't that far off. Obviously, the CZ bolt is just real tight and really smooth. Yeah. But uh, this is getting smooth. Mine is getting smooth. And it's the blued one, and it's got a couple of kinks, so I don't care about beating it around if I'm carrying it or something. Um, but yeah, that's replacing the CZ-412, and this is replacing the CZ-512, which I just sold today. Um, I've done a couple of transactions through the new system. Uh, first one that I tried to do, uh, the license checked out, and I was about to generate the code, and then the, the website shit the bed, so it was fun. Uh, and the one that I did today, it generated the code, and so I have my reference number, so... All squared away. I did not have to provide a receipt. There's some belief out there that for private sales you have to provide receipts. You do not need to provide a receipt for a private sale. Um, that's if you're turning in the gun for destruction. No, that's if you're turning in the gun for destruction. The RCMP or whatever police force that you turn it into has to provide a receipt. But uh, some people were confusing that on the politics thread. Uh, one modification that I had to do per the recommendation of Senor Adriel was the relief cut on the front of the magazine well on the C71 uh, to help with feeding of 1022 Max. Now this feeds 1022 Max super smooth. Nice. And uh, and then came Tuesday. Tuesday of last week, the day before the registry kicked in. 
I walked into Cabela's at 8 p.m. It closed at 9. And as I walk in, the manager walks into the floor and says, we are only going to stay open till 9 p.m. We have enough staff to process 10 more transactions. Sorry, folks. And there were a lot more than 10 people waiting to get processed. I did not understand that. Uh, that seemed to me like a really easy way to make a lot of money. Uh, just stay open an extra hour and just process these people. Uh, people started leaving. I was 20 numbers ahead of the number that was being called at that 8 p.m. And I just said, like, fuck it. I'm just going to stick around and see what happens. And I was the last person to walk out of that Cabela's. Maybe they got, maybe they like hustled. Come on, boys, let's sell some guns. No, a lot of people left. And maybe they thought that they should actually help me out because I bought this. <laughs> Whoa. What do you got going there? This is a crazy butt stock. Oh, boy. Hmm. Time to shoot, start, start shooting PRS, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's in uh, 6 5 Mead more. Nice, very nice. Yeah. Yeah, 6 5 Creep Meme. Uh, it is a Savage 110 Elite Precision. That'll be your MDT chassis then. That looks yeah. like an MDT chassis. It's an MDT chassis with Savage branding, but uh, yeah. MDT is right there, ACC stock mm -hmm. and ACC uh, chassis. Uh, the takes butt 10 stock round. there, yep. Yeah. And they've got their it turn takes... down vertical grip. Yep. It's got an adjustable Accu trigger. Uh, the bolt has got this fancy fucking coating Tin. on it. Titanium um, nitrate or whatever. I will say, though, it is not a very smooth bolt. It's a savage. <laughs> like it, it doesn't hold a candle to any Kika that I've ever handled. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure it'll take some breaking in, but it's, it has some issues fitting rounds. But I've only literally put 20 rounds through it. Uh, and that was at 200 yards after searing at 25. First group was an inch group at 200 yards. So, yeah. Like, it's a savage. It's it's going to be accurate. Um, it's going to be, like, really decently priced for what you get out of the gun. You're never going to get a bolt as, as smooth as a, a Tika, but uh, pretty good accuracy. Very good accuracy for the dollar. It is wearing the <laughs> MDT Elite rings, which are $300 by themselves. <laughs> the Elite rings? They, yeah, the I've Elite got, rings. See that? I've got some of their rings on this guy here. Um, yep. but there's yours have a bubble level built into it. No, these are their <laughs> these are their more uh, inexpensively priced rings. I need to get these because this is a 34 millimeter scope, and uh, oh yeah, yeah, they don't. Uh, there's not really yeah. many scope rings out there for that. Uh, it uses a AICS pattern max. Is it S A S E S max? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. They do it. sell 12 rounders. This is a 10 rounder, but I will tell you, those last two rounds really don't like to go in there. So I'm gonna run them with like eight. Or I'm mm -hmm. going to get the 12 round mag and run them with 10. That is, if I decide to keep it. Yeah. yeah. You um, got to shoot PRS to like really appreciate the features in that thing, right? Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and if I decide to keep it, I have to get the dies. I have to get the projectiles. I already have the brass because I have five boxes. So those hundred uh, cases are going to last me. Mm -hmm. um, I have primers from my, from the days when I had the Tika uh varmint in 308 mm -hmm. i don't know if you remember those days but that was a, quite a while ago i still have those federal match gold medal match primers so i've got primer i got like 800 of those primers sitting in my uh drawer just collecting dust um so i had to get a scope to go with this but i got the scope before i got the gun because i was waiting for this to go on sale but they, i did not want it to be known in the registry so i bought it and then you know what went on sale this fucking friday <laughs> This gun went on sale on Friday. This, does uh, Cabela's have like a money back guarantee on sales? Or yes, like they oh, do. That's so nice. So I don't know I if they had it. one of those or not. They did. I wasn't sure if they would do it for guns because they were really strict about guns being no return whatsoever. Their final yeah. sale. Yeah. And I walked in and I said, hey, I bought this rifle on Tuesday. It just went on sale today. It's like, okay, yeah, let me see the receipt. Let me check the website. Yeah, here's your $420 back. Ha <laughs> ha. Cabela's is like... 
American company, but they're so fucking good. They're so good. Oh, they deserve I'm, to win. <laughs> I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give them so much of my money. <laughs> like, I I don't know if other listeners uh, have uh, remember, but like wholesale sports used to be around, and they were the other like big box store. Um, but they had like such poor service. They didn't have like a money match or a, a price match. Um, their inventory was really weird, and uh, they, their, their website was terrible. Their website was uh, not as good as Cabela's, and they didn't run as many sales. Like Cabela's, even today, runs sales every like their Wild Wednesdays. Um, every Wednesday, they they, they often ha- they often have stuff like it's the same stuff for sale, but some of the stuff they put for sale are definite loss leaders. Like their mat that they're selling for forty nine dollars, that's a loss leader. They're not making money on that mat. They can't be. It's too bulky. The gel in it's too good. Like if you look at other shooting mats around, not around the same quality, because there's not really a lot of other mats that are like that. But um, most other shooting mats are 100 bucks. That one's 50 when it goes on sale. They're not making any money. Yeah, no, they 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 put stuff that I never see on sale on sale on Wild Wednesdays. Like they had this scope, the uh, uh, Vortex uh, Viper PST Gen Twos. Uh, regular, uh, they were like. Twelve hundred, thirteen hundred dollars. They had it on sale for like eight ninety nine, like a couple mm-hmm. of weeks ago, just just for the Wild Wednesday day. Like, so yeah, that's what this guy's wearing. It's a Vortex Viper PST Gen two five by to twenty five by fifty millimeter scope. Five to has 25. the yeah, it has the Vortex cap and a Butler Creek flip up for the eyepiece. And uh, I am considering whether or not I want to actually put the giant fuck off break and, instead of just the small fuck off break on this thing. Big one, that one, whatever that one yeah. is. Yeah, because um, uh, shooting long range, you can load up your bipod, so like push forward on the bipod, and then fire. And if, you, if you've got a good break on it, you'll be able to watch your impact, so you don't necessarily need a spotter. Yeah, no the uh, the clarity of the glass at twenty five is a little so so. But at 20, 20 power, it's good. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, you need you need some distance to get something like that. Um, the clarity on this thing's pretty good. For the money, it's not nearly what as good it? as that one. Uh, this is the uh, Cabela's Covenant 7. It's their big, bad 34-millimeter uh, 3 to 21. Yeah, 3 to 21. I believe this thing's got... Oh, yeah, it's got a... a a big fuck off Christmas tree FFP reticle in it. Oh yeah, no. uh, the, the thing on the thing is huge. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Those are nice. It's nice. Yeah, um, uh, I I heard that those Covenant scopes from Cabela's are just off brand Vortex. Um, they're off brand something. Like they're made in the same factory as something. Like the the nice thing. This is a, a twenty two, and I, I've used this one for CRPS and like long range um, rimfire. I also use it for gophers. It's super heavy, so it's like it's terrible to like haul around the field. But um, I like shooting 22. I like shooting gophers with 22. And if you miss and you spot where that impact is on the Christmas tree reticle, you just move Adjust. it. Adjust. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You move to where that wherever that hit was onto the gopher, and that gopher is toast with the next round. Yeah. No, but see, I I went gopher shooting. That's the thing that I did. Oh, I, yeah, I finally did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I finally found a way to go gopher shooting, and it was hilarious. I was uh, I was doing a class at the beginning of the month. And one of my students goes, old timer, goes, yeah, I'm getting my license because my yard is full of fucking gophers. And I go, well, I'm sitting on like 5,000 rounds of ammunition. Do you think it can help you out? <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah, come on down. So me and my friends went down and we got 20 gophers off his yard, which is not mm-hmm. a lot in gopher numbers. But we just did the yard and all yep. around the house are fields just full of them. So we're gonna be going back there and targeting the fields. Uh, what did you get? Like uh, rules of engagement from them for the for the fields? Uh, weapons free. You'll get, you got it. Like whenever you get a permission from a landowner, always get them. So like they'll have rules for you. They'll say like, yeah. don't shoot towards the house. Don't shoot towards this direction. Rim fire oh, only. I was doing. I was do. I was doing a lot of that for him. Like this, keep mm-hmm. in mind that this guy doesn't usually let people shoot on his land, let alone on, around his house. I was his pal instructor, so I think he was more inclined to let me mm-hmm. do it. And when I got there, I was like, okay, so what are you having? Like, where are the houses? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to stay away from? He's like, oh, yeah, it's a house over there. Just go nuts. I'm like, okay, so I'm just going to, I'm going to, like, I, I looked around the property. I 
established fields of fire. <laughs> Saved. The girl yeah, slippery. Yeah, so uh, my friends and I, um, we sat down. Uh, they were there for about three hours, and I stayed for another hour and a half. Uh, together, we got ten gophers, and then I got ten more after they left. Um, but yeah, seventeen HMR. Ooh. It does a number on them. <laughs> Were you getting them uh, close up or far? Uh, longest shot was about 75 meters. Yeah. Um, but yeah, th at that point, you're actually starting to struggle with 22 long rifle if you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. 17 HMR is like a point and click and venture. It's like point yeah. at go for delete. Yep. Um, yeah. And, it, for clo and, I, and I had something to uh, keep in close uh, for close range encounters a la aliens. I had my... <laughs> 357 lever action loaded with 158 grain full metal jacket rounds and uh, a gopher popped up about five meters away from us i was like i don't want to pick up the rifle that's on the rest so i just grabbed the lever action bang <laughs> <laughs> it's ass separated from its head by about five feet <laughs> that's fun to use those kind of guns yeah i was gonna say like uh close up uh you have to worry about sight over bore that's that's where you yeah. start missing. Uh, uh, that's start why hitting I quite a, low. I had, a, had an iron side rifle for five nice. five meter, you know, and up shots. Because like you think about it, and like that's that's quite a bit of distance between yeah. like where you're looking and where the the bullets are coming out. Yeah. And uh, and so yeah, that's 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 what I did. Lots of classes as well. Um, mm -hmm. Preparing for three gun by actually doing some shooting, uh, and yeah, it's going to be this gun, Shadow Two, this rifle, RDB. Very nice. And if I can get this thing to run target load, the FD12 uh, with the ten shot max. If not, I'll just run a Versa Max with a big old magazine tube and just figure out how to do a load. Yeah, that'll work too. Yeah. Uh, there's a new, not a new registry. That's about the only thing that we could talk about. Um, could become a registry. It's it 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 is it is. It's not sugar coated. The stores have a mandate on them placed of keeping records of every transaction for twenty years. So it's not a. Gun registry, folks. It's a transaction database. Get it? <laughs> hey, Adriel, look what I'm doing. Look, look. It's a transaction database. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we know what's happening. Yeah. Um, but interestingly, you know what I realized? We got what we wanted. Do you remember how many times we talked about for license verification, there should be a fucking website that you plug in the shit and you get a, this is a valid license. Such a horrible website. <laughs> not like this. Not like not this. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we finally got the website where we can verify and it's a piece of crap. Uh, I haven't tried doing it on my mobile phone. I'm on, the, on my I, desktop. I'm not. I'm not. It's a I'm piece not. of crap. It's so hard to use. Uh, just to log in is a is a chore by itself, and uh, and then once it you crashes. yeah, it, what's that? It crashes. Yeah, it does give you the information though. You do get to yeah, see like and, yes, uh, valid and, license. But I will say this: it does return. This is a valid license before you generate the number for the reference number. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I proceeded with that one sale because I got a yes, this license is valid, and I tried yeah. to generate the number, and then it didn't. So it's like Government I know the license is valid. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I did generate the number eventually, but yeah, like it, it, so that what's it gonna be like with a gun show? Like, are all the old folks gonna have a little laptop and gonna be signing into the Wi-Fi and it's gonna be horrible? Doing this. In the middle Who of buys the fucking... guns at a gun show, though? Anyways, like gun gun show guns are always like super <laughs> overpriced. I almost what was it that I saw that I was really oh there was a the Calgary Shooting Center was there selling somebody's collection, mm -hmm. and it was all Gucci 
and our 223 military semis. So the guy had a legit, legit stoner 63. Hmm. Like the whole thing. Like it didn't ha- he didn't have any other parts, but it was like a complete gun. It was like five grand. He had a, a an actual G36. Not like the ones that have been brought in by yep. um, tactical imports as of late, which are like 99% of the way there, I think. I have some stuff that isn't really it, but this was a straight up G36. I was like, how the fuck did he get this? And I guess I think the guy did work for movies. So that's why he has like, he had, uh, he had an MS, uh, an M17 bullpup. Mm-hmm. One of those. Um, those are cool. Those are fun. Yeah. I think an F2000. I think he had an F2000 in there too. Like, like he had all of them. Like, like all the. A real NR... bullpup guy. Yeah. Oh, and he had a, an actual Air 180. Like not, uh, not like a. Uh, WK or anything like, like an AR one eighty B. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's like I was looking at the collection. It's like Jesus Christ, like, this guy had it all. It's like yeah, you should see the stuff that we couldn't bring to the show. He had like a ten inch P ninety with like an actual FN barrel, not the CCMMG ten inch barrels that you'd have to get from the states. The PS ninety. Yeah. 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 Hmm. It was like wow. I had one of those uh, AR 180Bs and uh, reviewed it and uh, sold it for a profit, but I saw what they're going for recently. It's a lot more. Um, that's another thing that happened. People trying to beat the registry. There was a fire sale and prices were nuts. Prices um, are always going, getting nuts. I can't. I can't wait for this all to be over and for prices to go back to normal again, especially on ammo. Like I, I yeah. can wait. I've, I'm probably good for another year or two. Uh, on ammo, yeah, but uh, after that, like the panics better be over because I need to buy some ammo for some reasonable prices. Dude, last time I bought two two three, I was like, I just because it was on sale, and I was like, okay, I could I could use another a thousand rounds. Mm-hmm. It was like sixty one cents a round, and I was like, ugh. I got some barn all for fifty cents because I was like, eh, maybe just in case. Yeah, that stuff. It doesn't feel good. Expensive though. Yeah, well, uh, I guess Can't we should talk about Russia there's a anymore. war in Ukraine yeah. in case anybody that only gets their news from us. War in Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, that happened. And uh, that's causing all kinds of issues. Um, Arnall has dried up and everybody is panic buying it. And SKS's are reason. expenses expensive. SKS's, SVTs, and Mosins are all very expensive. Oh, I, I'm you, buying a, an I buy an SKS tomorrow for three hundred bucks. That you you're buying for some old boy who like bought it for two hundred and he thinks he's getting a deal from you. Yeah, yeah, I am. He is, yeah. but you are also getting a deal. I am. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm not questioning anything. I'm also getting those enough cases from him. Ah, uh, yeah. That's good. You yeah. need them. I have uh, four double rifle cases. Yeah, I'm going to cram five guns per one of those. I'm just going to hold them around. <laughs> uh, like, I'm seriously just going to chuck... That's really cramming uh, them. No, I'm going to put the guns in gun socks and take the foam out and just chuck them in there. I... Uh, you don't want to leave one layer... Of... No, you got to leave some foam in there, man. You're going to bang them around. They're coarse guns, Adriel. Do you know what students do to coarse guns? I'll show you what students do to coarse guns. Okay, I'm going to ax and prove this gun. Picks up the gun and immediately drops it on top of the other one. <laughs> That's okay. what coarse guns happen to. Okay. 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 Oh, we have a lever action and we have a 303 British rifle. Let's try and jam 303 British in a 3030. They're both 303. One of them has an extra zero. What does that matter? Yeah, it's yeah, extra yeah. power. Just put it in there. It's more DACA, obviously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I Carrie says he, he paid four hundred dollars for his Chinese SKS in 2020. I mean, that's still a good price. Like right now, they're they're what four fifty five hundred. No, uh, firearms out has them for like five fifty. That's what they are now. Woo! Woo! Oh, well, they're not making them anymore. But I know there's got still got to be some caches of those things somewhere. Well, see, I would have said yes, except for the fact that I know from reading a couple of reliably sourced articles, a lot of those guns 
we're coming out from of salt Ukraine. mines in the Ukraine. Yeah, they were coming <laughs> so out of the Ukraine. I knew that. Yeah. It's like it's it's like it's yeah. I'm sure there are some places that still have some, but what if I mean, Ukraine kicks Russia out and they're like, we need to make some money now, Let's crack those things out and sell them, mm, and then we get a bunch. That would be nice. A renaissance of cheap S gases. And they're like, you know what? Canada, you guys were so good to us. We're going to sell those S gases to you for $100 each. That carries on to something. I'm pretty sure they're using those S gases to shoot at the Russians. (laughs) Just in case. I've I've seen some truly fucking weird shit from them. A lot of the guys in the Donbass region, the the Russians have been putting putting them out with like total garbage. One guy was like, you see, like a Moses. There's, there's been a couple of, <laughs> yeah, Moses. Like yeah. They're issuing them fucking Moses with PU. So it's home stuff. guard stuff, right? Oh, you want to yeah. volunteer? Oh, you, do you have any military training? No. Here you go. <laughs> it's bolt action. We 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 don't think you know very much, so. <laughs> the Nazis are over there. Shoot in that direction. <laughs> oh, look. This is the second time that this rifle has heard that line. <laughs> oh, my God. What a Good world stuff. We live in now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, cool. Well, I'm not sure if there's anything else. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, crazy is in Poland trying to get the fuck out of this country. He shot a 12 gauge pistol and uh, nearly broke his hand. Ha! Huh. That sounds amazing. Yeah, he'll Love be that. back on in a couple of weeks. He said. Poland would be cool. Yeah. He says that uh, his list of to buy includes uh, G3s. AKs, MP5s, um, lots of fun things that we can't have. Hmm. And that pistol that's a 12 gauge because it's apparently like 150 bucks. So, gotta have it. Gotta yeah, have that's it. your mouse trap. <laughs> that's your mouse trap in the house. You gotta set up like, have you ever seen that old like patent for the mouse trap that's got a handgun? That's this is the most American <laughs> thing ever. The handgun no, mouse trap. That checks out. It does check out. All right, uh, this has been a We Are Not Dead uh, Summer 2022 edition episode. Uh, thank you for watching. Maybe we'll do another one of these in December. So um, yeah. have a good night, folks. Later, everyone. Kill it, Adriel. <laughs>